Today, we're gonna be going with a new look. We're gonna be going Rambo on the dividends today, so let's get it. In today's video, we're gonna be going over my purchases for this week's dividend investing. Every single week, I've been investing around $900 into the stock market, just a little bit over $900 ever since the crash of uh, in March. And look at the portfolio today. It is sitting at $49,119. Let me give this a quick refresh. Make sure it didn't go up. All right, it did not go up. And uh, total income on the day of this portfolio is $1,973 from uh, dividends only. What's crazy about my portfolio is that just over a month ago, I was down 15% plus. Uh, portfolio was down over $10,000 in value. Over $10,000 in value, all right? It was the end, basically, it was the end of the world, and now I'm just $655 away from breaking even from all of my investments. I don't know what is going on anymore, but uh, let's try to figure things out. Today alone, my portfolio is up over $1,000, uh, $1,358, so I'm pretty happy that I stuck with it investing throughout the entire crash, and uh, we, we're almost recovered here, man. So for anybody that's brand new, every single week I update you exactly with what I'm buying. Currently, I'm holding just over 50 stocks and ETFs in my portfolio. I've been trying to cut that back down, but I'll talk about that later in the portfolio, later in the video. So before you even ask, I'm using the website Simply Safe Dividends. Links are gonna be in the descriptions and everything else is gonna be down there as well for all those free stocks for all you new investors. So let's jump right into the Robinhood portfolio and check out exactly what I bought for the Robinhood challenge this week. So for over the past few weeks now, I've been consistently investing around $300 into this Robinhood portfolio. And uh, today is sitting at $20,000. I'm up $550 on the day, about 2.79% of the portfolio on the week. It's been a crazy week. Every day has been a green day. Uh, $1,400 in gains. And in the month, almost $2,000 in gains. So I'm excited that my portfolio is up, but I'm very worried about where the economy is going. So I just want to get uh, that out there. Um, in the three months chart here, I'm still down 10%. So it is safe to say that the market did crash over a month ago. And on March 23rd, I believe, my portfolio was down 30%, down $7,000. Scary times, but you know, I still kept investing uh, consistently. And that is the main theme for this entire channel, consistently investing for uh, long term. Invest during the crash, invest during the high times, and eventually, Hopefully, I can profit off of that. All right, so for this week, these are the stocks that I bought. I bought Realty Income, SPHD is an ETF, and ExxonMobil. I invested $100 into each one equally, and um, I essentially increased my dividend by $17.17. .17. If you guys have been investing for over the last years or so, most likely your portfolio is gonna be down, but if you've been investing since last month, I'm pretty sure your portfolio is up. So let me know down in the comments below if you're up or down on your entire portfolio right now because I've been getting so many comments thanking me about uh, people that just started investing, how they're up so much on their portfolio right now. So before we jump into the next segment, if you guys want to see my entire portfolio, links are gonna be in the description. You can check out every stock in my entire portfolio so it's easier for you to follow along. So this is my dividend growth portfolio sitting at $16,401. This is different than my Robinhood portfolio. My Robinhood portfolio is a high dividend yielding portfolio, all right? So that is the main difference here. This one is a lot uh, safer and um, I'm more confident in uh, these stocks than my Robinhood portfolio. And that is why every single week I'm investing around $600 into this portfolio. And uh, today's gains, I'm sitting at uh, just under $500. On the week, I'm up $875. And on the month here, I'm up $1,600. So we are so close to breaking even on uh, this portfolio as well. One thing you guys need to know is that this return is not 
a time weighted return. This is a money weighted return. This is the most controversial thing in M1 finance. A lot of people don't like money weighted returns. A lot of people do. Um, that is really all a preference for me. I'm on the fence about it. Uh, according to the time weighted return, I'm down 10%. According to M1 Finance, money weighted return is a better tracker of your, your portfolio's performance. It tracks every single time you make a buy, a sell, um, a deposit, all your gains and losses, and the dividends. So let's jump into the activities here and check out what I bought earlier this week. So you can see that, um, you know, I wasn't kidding when I'm telling you I'm consolidating my entire portfolio. Some of the stocks that I own just have to go. And uh, Unilever is one of them. And that is why when it comes to my buy, it's saying that I bought $844.97. Um, that is included with the $600 that I invested. Uh, so going down the list here, I bought a lot into Boeing. Boeing is another company that's uh, on the chopping block. So I just want you guys to know. So make sure you keep updated with the uh, videos, stay subscribed and uh, make sure you know exactly what I'm buying each and every single week. So my biggest purchases of this week was into Realty Income. Like I said last month, I'm going all in on Realty Income. I've essentially sold out of every single REIT that I own and, uh, consult and put all that money back into Realty Income. Going down the list here, another company that I'm very bullish on is AT&T. Um, I'm also investing into some companies that do not pay any dividends, such as Google. And um, yeah, today I only bought Google, uh, which does not provide a dividend. And if you guys are brand new to using M1 Finance, if you go into the holding section of your portfolio, um, you can see the unrealized gains here. This is the time weighted return. So this is typically what you would see like in uh, Robinhood and uh, many other brokerages out there. This is the typical time weighted return versus the money return, which is on the main page. So according to this, you know, I'm up almost 4%, $600 on um, all of my investments in this portfolio. My biggest gains on M1 Finance is actually not a dividend stock, it is Tesla. Tesla has been on a tear. Uh, I'm up almost 50% on my initial investments and my biggest gains from a dividend stock is realty income. In my portfolio, I have a few companies that pay a monthly dividend and um, Realty Income is the monthly dividend company. So if you guys wanna check that out, um, go take a look at them. But yeah, I'm very bullish on uh, Realty Income as well. So now let's take a larger overview of the entire portfolio and some of the new strategies that I want to implement later on. Um, so we're getting into the tens of thousands of dollars when it comes to this portfolio. And I just wanna do my best to protect it during a bear market. One of my main problems that I see in my portfolio is that I believe that I'm too diversified. And uh, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So when it comes to my entire portfolio, uh, you can see that I'm heavy into real estate, communications, consumer discretionary and information technology. And um, according to Simply Safe Dividends, your portfolio uh, excluding funds looks well diversified. So that is good for me right? Except that um, I'm kind of heavily into real estate at the moment. I should try to get this down a little bit more. And uh, let's jump into the income of this portfolio. So right now I'm relying a lot on these companies to generate me income for my dividends. And Simply Save Dividends is basically suggesting that no individual stock, funds excluded, contributes more than roughly 5% to your total income. So if we take a look at the top income sources, a lot of these companies are well over 5%. Realty income is at almost 20. Um, ExxonMobil is at 10, at and is at seven. So in the future, if any of these um, companies cut their dividends or pause them because of you know, this bear market, you know, I'm gonna be losing a decent portion of my uh, dividends. So in the future, I have to be a little bit more cautious of exactly what I'm investing in. Uh, if we take a look at all of my income sources from this portfolio, you know, we can see that once we get out of the top 10, all these companies are not generating me that much income. So I have to really start uh, looking into these companies and, uh, you know, finding the most undervalued one and um, investing more money into them. For example, when it comes to Verizon communications, I'm definitely comfortable with this being 5% of my entire income. Um, McDonald's, Nike, all of these companies, I'm very comfortable 
uh, with them being 5% of my income. But there is a big but here. Um, a lot of these companies, their dividend yields are, you know, closer to 1% or 2%. Uh, so it's going to be a lot harder to throw in and invest more of my cash in them because it's just going to take a lot longer to uh, grow that dividend income. So luckily, we have time on our side. And um, I'm not trying to rush this or anything. But uh, yeah, I, obviously, we want to make as much money as possible from uh, our investments. But uh, something like this, it's going to have to take time. I can still remember one of the first videos that I put out. You know, my portfolio was sitting at $100. So, you know, I've came a long way, $100 to almost $50,000 um, in the stock market. I've learned a lot in the past year, so I think... I can definitely help a newbie when it comes to investing in the stock market. Uh, the number one tip that I have for you guys is, is to just start. For my entire life, you know, I've, I was always interested in investing, uh, especially in the stock market, but I was always afraid that you know, I'm gonna lose money, basically. And uh, that caused me to not start investing until I was like 29 years old to 30 years old. And um, you know, I just decided, hey, you know, this is the easiest time to start investing. There's basically um, all these brokerages out there that are not charging any fees uh, when it comes to trading or commissions and stuff like that. And since I'm not investing with a large sum of money, I'm only investing, you know, $100 every single week or so. Um, I'm going to use this learning experience to build a big portfolio. And, um, and now, you know, two years down the line or so, I'm a lot more confident than I was in this video. Nothing is going to teach you faster than real life experience. Um, I'm not telling you to just, you know, go in there blindly. You have to do your own research. You have to, you know, use all the tools that are available to you. With all that being said, uh, hopefully I persuaded you guys to, you know, start investing in yourself. Uh, if you guys want to watch more videos from me, go check out these videos here. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification and you guys will be able to see my next video. Um, also, follow me on Instagram, follow me on my other channel as well where I go a little bit deeper and uh, more informal when it comes to investing and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Thanks for watching. Man, does this look stupid? <laughs>